Hi guys, this is C. A. Balakrishna. In this video, we will be discussing Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Basically, before entering into the act, first of all, we will understand what is the meaning of this term money laundering. Simply speaking, money laundering means conversion of black money into white money would be known as money laundering. Now, the question that arises is, what does this black money means? Basically, black money means the money on which income tax has not been paid will be known as black money. Okay, the income on which income tax has been evaded would be known as black money. Hope that is clear. Now, Another question that arises is, why did the person evaded in income tax? Okay, what is the reason why the person who has earned the income has not paid the tax? Basically, if you see, there are two ways through which this black money can be generated. See, black money can be earned through two ways. One is through proper legal means. Okay, a person earns income by performing you know normal legal businesses and even though he has earned the income through normal legal businesses he doesn't pay the tax on this income thereby this income will be known as black money since he has not paid the tax on this money that is one way through which black money can be generated and the second way through which black money can be generated is a person earns income through illegal means illegal means means let's say for example there is particular person mr a he kills mr b for killing mr b he accepts okay mr a accepts 1 crore rupees from mr c that means mr a has earned 1 crore rupees for killing Mr. B. Now, Mr. A cannot show this amount of 1 crore rupees as income earned by him, you know, for killing Mr. B in his income tax return. Okay. He cannot declare this income in his income tax return. Thereby, he will try to evade the tax on this, you know, money which has been earned through illegal means. This is the second route through which black money can be generated. Now, this PMLA, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, deals with the, the money that has been earned through illegal means. Okay, PMLA is not concerned with the black money that has been generated through legal means. Okay, PMLA is concerned with black money that has been generated through illegal means. Now, if you see, It is clear that PMLA is concerned with this second part, okay, with the money that has been earned through illegal means. Now, the intention of the person who has earned this black money through committing illegal, uh, you know, illegal offenses is not to evade the tax. He wants to pay the tax, but he wants to hide the source from which this money has been generated, okay. He doesn't want to be punished for the offense that he that he has committed. Okay. He basically wants to hide the offense that has been committed by him. Okay. The idea of the person is not to evade the tax, but the idea of the person is to you know hide the offense that he has committed. So for this purpose, what he'll do is he'll perform money laundering wherein by performing money laundering, he will convert this money which has been earned through illegal ways into such a way that this money has been earned through legal ways. Okay, basically he will disconnect the connection between the offense and the income. Okay, by performing money laundering, he will do this. Now this prevention of money laundering act is implemented 
to prevent the money laundering that is being performed by the people who are committing offenses and earning the money okay this is the idea of prevention of money laundering basically in the act if you see there is a schedule to the act in the schedule various offenses are listed those will be known as scheduled offenses if any person commits those scheduled offense and earns income as a result of committing such offense that income would be known as proceeds of crime okay now since this person doesn't want to evade the tax on this income okay he wanted to convert this income which has been earned through illegal uh, means into white money therefore what he will do is but he cannot disclose this income directly saying that it has been earned through committing this offense okay he cannot disclose so okay therefore what he will do is he will perform money laundering through money laundering he will convert this black money into white money thereby he will not be disclosing the actual source through which the amount has been earned okay i'll i'll just uh, tell you one of the example through which this money laundering can be performed let's say there is mr a mr a earned 1 crore rupees by some illegal means okay he earned 1 crore rupees now he cannot show this 1 crore rupees as income in the income tax return but he wants to convert this 1 crore into white money basically this money has been earned through committing such some offense okay and he wants to hide this offense now what mr a can do is now let's say there is a particular land the stamp duty one second the stamp duty value of such land is let's say some 10 lakhs whereas the market value of such land is 1.1 crore that means 1 crore 10 lakhs that means if you sell the uh, land you will be getting 1 crore 10 lakhs but for the purpose of paying stamp duty the stamp duty value is just 10 lakhs that means in the agreement for purchasing the land the value of the land can be shown as just 10 lakhs now what this mr a will do is he will pay 10 lakhs through proper banking channels to the person from whom he is buying the land okay in the agreement the value of the land will be shown as 10 lakhs only and balance 1 crore is there na see basically the person who is selling the land will not sell for the stamp duty value he will sell the land for market value that means he will sell for 1.1 crore he will not sell for stamp duty value thereby this mr a will buy the land from such particular person by paying 10 lakhs through proper banking channels and balance 1 crore through cash this way he purchased the land of value 1.1 crore by paying 10 lakhs through proper banking channel and 1 crore of black money now he wants to convert this black money into white money na now what he will do is this land which has been purchased by mr a he will sell it to some other person but while selling the land to some other person he will collect entire 1.1 crore through bank only okay that means he will collect entire white money from such particular person now this person mr a has sold the land which he has bought for 10 lakhs for 1.1 crore that means 1.1 crore minus 10 lakhs would be 1 crore would be the capital gain earned by him on this capital gain he will pay whatever the tax it is whether it is 20% or as per the slab rates he will pay the tax and he will convert this entire amount to white money okay this is one of the way 
through which money laundering can be performed and black money can be converted into white money okay by now you might have understood how this concept of money laundering works now what are the objects of this prevention of money laundering act basically there are two objectives of prevention of money laundering act the first objective is obviously to prevent money laundering we can call this objective as preventive measure okay and the second objective is provide for confiscation of property involved in money laundering okay it might happen that this act might not be able to prevent the money laundering okay thereby money laundering has been committed now once the money laundering has been committed after some days the property which has been involved in the money laundering might be identified by the government in that case such property which is involved in the money laundering can be confiscated by the government therefore thereby this act also provides for confiscation of property involved in money laundering we can call it as corrective measure okay these are the two objectives of prevention of money laundering act that is the idea of pmla now what are the topics covered under this pmla if you see section number 3 and section number 4 deals with offense of money laundering this is very important section number 5 to 11 deals with attachment and adjudication 12 to 15 deals with obligation of reporting entity we will discuss what is meant by this reporting entity and 16 to 24 deals with search and seizure 25 to 42 deals with appeals 43 to 54 deals with special courts and 55 to 61 deals with reciprocal arrangements and 62 to 75 deals with miscellaneous topics we will not be discussing those miscellaneous topics however now terms used in this chapter basically you will be finding two terms in this chapter the first term is scheduled offense scheduled offense means in the schedule to the act there are various offenses prescribed if any person commits that offense that would be known as scheduled offense and if person earns any income through committing such scheduled offense such income would be known as proceeds of crime hope that is clear and by earning this proceeds of crime the person will try to convert to this proceeds of crime into white money and there comes the pmla to prevent this activity of money laundering hope that is clear next section 3 first section offense of money laundering what is meant by offense of money laundering any person who directly or indirectly assists or involved in any activity connected with the proceeds of crime see connected with proceeds of crime for a person to be known as involved in money laundering it is not necessary that he must have committed the offense it would be sufficient if he is in one way or the other connected with the proceeds of the crime okay how he can be connected including its concealment the person might try to conceal the proceeds of crime okay he has not committed the crime but he is trying to conceal the proceeds that has been earned through the crime or possession of the crime he has not a possession of the proceeds of crime he has not committed the crime but he is possessing the proceeds of crime even in that case it would be treated that such a person is committing offense of money laundering and acquisition or using the proceeds of crime or claiming it as untainted money untainted money means white money claiming it as white money shall be deemed to be guilty of offense of money laundering okay not only the person who has committed the crime and earned the proceeds of crime but the person who is concealing possessing acquisition or uh, acquiring or using or claiming it as untainted money all these persons will be deemed that they are committing the offense of money laundering okay now whenever you see in the cases relating to this 
offense of money laundering if a person has committed offense of money laundering there will not be only one crime there will be two crimes involved let me tell you this mr a has committed a you know murder this is the primary crime okay this is offense one now as a result mr a earned amount and he is trying to convert this into white money this is offense of money laundering which is the offense number 2 okay thereby whenever a person is involved in a offense of money laundering there will be not just offense of money laundering along with this offense of money laundering there will be a primary offense involved okay there will be two offenses in such cases hope that is clear one is offense of money laundering and another one is primary crime that he has been committed thereby making it two offenses next money laundering involves three steps how this money laundering will be performed basically there will be three steps that will be involved for committing this offense of money laundering first one is placement second one is layering third one is integration what does this term placement means basically placement means injecting black money into formal financial system this is the first step of money laundering in which the proceeds of the crime will be injected into the financial system okay will be injected into the financial system once it is injected into the financial system the second step starts that is layering the amount which has been injected into the financial system will be spread in such a way that the source through which the money has been earned will be lost okay you will not be able to identify the source through which the money has been earned in such a way the money will be disbursed through various account and through various transactions the money will be layered once this layering step is uh, completed basically this step of layering will take long time okay it will not just complete in one to two days in some cases it can take even up to 10 to 20 years okay once this layering is completed the final step is integration whereby money enters into financial system as a clean money okay as if the money is a normal white money in such a way the money will be entering into the financial system that would be integration with the normal financial system these are the three steps that are involved in money laundering next section number 4 punishment for money laundering if any person commits the offense of money laundering then what is the punishment offense of money laundering for offense of money laundering the punishment is rigorous imprisonment from 3 to 7 years and also with fine that would be the punishment for general money laundering in case offense of money laundering involving narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances okay if the offenses offense of money laundering is related to narcotic drugs in that case maximum in imprisonment can extend to 10 years along with fine okay in case of normal money laundering maximum imprisonment is 7 years only in case of money laundering related to narcotic drugs then the maximum uh, imprisonment can extend to 10 years that is the punishment for committing money laundering see here i have told you that there will be two offenses now the punishment which we have discussed is for this offense number 2 only for money laundering only this punishment for the murder that has been committed there will be again a separate punishment will be issued as per the respective criminal act okay the punishment that we have discussed in section 4 is only for this money laundering offense 
for the original crime that has been committed there will be separate punishment hope that is clear now section 5 attachment of property involved in money laundering how the attachment will take place officer not below the rank of deputy director he is having reason to believe that proceeds of crime may be concealed okay he thinks that the person who has committed the crime might conceal the proceeds of crime thereby the officer can provisionally attach the property involved in money laundering for period not exceeding 180 days okay for a period of 180 days he can provisionally attach the property now while calculating 180 days you have to exclude the period for which proceedings are stayed by the order of court okay if at all any court stays or stops the proceedings by passing an order such a period for which the proceedings were stopped should be excluded while calculating 180 days next once the provisional attachment once the property is provisionally attached within 30 days the officer has to file a complaint with adjudicating authority stating that i have provisionally attached the property of particular person and i have reasons to believe that such particular person is involved in the offense of money laundering okay you please accept the complaint like this a complaint has to be filed with the adjudicating authority within 30 days who will file the complaint the proper officer who is not below the rank of deputy director who has provisionally attached the property will file the complaint with the adjudicating authority now adjudicating authority will conduct the proceedings and will decide whether the person has actually committed offense of money laundering or not let us see now section 6 and 7 it deals with appointment of adjudicating authority who will appoint the adjudicating authority central government will appoint composition of adjudicating authority who will be present in the adjudicating authority there will be chairperson and two members now what is the term of their office the term is for 5 years or age of 65 years whichever is earlier and any vacancy that has been created will be you know filled by central government and the staff will be appointed by the central government only hope that is clear section number 8 adjudication how does this adjudication will happen once the complaint is filed with the adjudicating authority by proper officer regarding the offense of money laundering that has been committed by any person the adjudicating authority will accept the complaint and will send a show cause notice of 30 days to such person asking his response okay adjudicating authority has accepted the complaint after seeing the complaint it will send a show cause notice to such person asking that i have received a complaint against you that you have committed a offense of money laundering you come and prove that you have not committed a offense of money laundering you have to prove that within a 30 days like this the adjudicating authority will give a notice to such person no such person has to reply within 30 days based on the reply if adjudicating authority based on the reply feels that the person has not committed uh, offense of money laundering then it will dismiss the case if it, it feels that yes this person committed the uh, offense of money laundering we should further conduct the proceedings to decide how much of, of uh, amount is involved and who are the further persons involved in this money laundering thereby the, it is prima facie proved that the person committed money laundering but we still need to carry on the proceedings if adjudicating authority feels so then it will order for attachment of the property okay basically it will confirm the provisional attachment that has been made by the officer ordering attachment once the order of attachment is passed the order of attachment can be passed for period not exceeding 365 days or pendency of proceeding the attachment order can be passed for a period of 365 days there is a difference between attachment and confiscation that i'll tell you first of all we'll see the flow after that i'll explain you the difference between attachment and confiscation basically once the order of attachment is passed uh, order will be passed for 365 days or it will continue for the period during which the proceedings are still pending that would be the period for which the attachment order will be valid after that after completion of proceedings if the offense of money laundering is proved 
then the order of confiscation will be passed okay first of all adjudicating authority will pass order of attachment after passing order of attachment it will conduct the proceedings in the proceedings it is finally proved that the money laundering is you know committed in that case order of confiscation will be passed now what is the difference between order of attachment and order of confiscation basically in case adjudicating authority attaches any property in that case the property the possession is there now the possession of the property will be taken over by the adjudicating authority but the ownership of the property will be with that person only okay the ownership will not be taken whereas in case of confiscation along with the possession of the property even ownership of the property will be taken over by the adjudicating authority that is the difference between attachment and confiscation hope that is clear next once the order of confiscation is passed ownership of property shall vest with the central government that will be dealt by section number 9 and central government will appoint administrators to manage the properties confiscated once the properties are been uh, have been confiscated these properties have to be managed or they have to be sold to the proper persons and the money has to be realized for purpose of selling the properties or managing the properties that have been confiscated central government will appoint a particular administrator okay he will manage the properties which have been confiscated by the central government hope that is clear that is regarding attachment and confiscation now section number 12 which deals with reporting entity to maintain records basically what does this reporting entity means see the central government through this prevention of money laundering act wants to prevent money laundering now for preventing money laundering it needs the information relating to the transactions that are being entered okay most of the transactions will happen through banking channels thereby what central government through this prevention of money laundering has done is it has identified some reporting entities basically the major reporting entities would be banks financial inter uh, intermediaries and some other financial institutions those will be reporting entities now the act has placed some obligations on these reporting entities what are those obligations let us see first of all these reporting entities have to maintain record of all transactions that they have entered with their clients for how much period they have to maintain for a period of five years from the date of transaction the records has to be maintained okay along with the records of transaction they should also maintain record of documents evidencing identity of clients example would be kyc documents aadhar card pan card such documents evidence which evidence the identity of the clients should also be maintained by the reporting entity for how much period they have to be maintained for a period of one second how to close this even the documents which are evidencing the identity of clients must be maintained for a period of five years from the closure of business relationship with the client okay for that much period the documents have to be maintained now all the information must be kept confidential but this information can be shared with director director means enforcement director as per section 2a when enforcement director asks to, to furnish the records to reporting entity the reporting entity must furnish these records to the enforcement director hope that is clear enhanced due diligence section 12 AA deals with enhanced due diligence that means while entering into certain transactions the reporting entity has to execute more care while entering into those transactions what are those transactions we will see first of all transactions covered under this first one is withdrawal or deposit of cash exceeding certain limit that is the first uh, transaction if at all reporting entity allows any of its clients to deposit or withdraw amount exceeding particular limit that will be prescribed by central government the 
reporting entity has to execute some extra due diligence okay the enhanced due diligence on such type of transaction second transaction is transaction in foreign currency exceeding certain limit okay and high value imports see here only imports is covered exports is not covered transactions with risk of money laundering or terrorist financing while entering into these types of transactions the reporting entity has to exercise some enhanced due diligence now what does this enhanced due diligence means additional due diligence involves verifying identity of clients verifying ownership and financial position of the client and such additional steps as may be prescribed those would be additional due diligence that has to be performed now note do not allow transaction if client does not furnish the identity okay if client doesn't furnish us the identity you should not allow the client to enter into the transaction hope that is clear next section number 13 inquiry by director on reporting entity see director may either on his own motion or on application made by any authority office or any person conduct a inquiry on the reporting entity okay if the director feels that the enforcement director feels that reporting entity is not complying with the requirements of prevention of money laundering act then he can conduct the inquiry on such reporting entity and during inquiry he can also order for conducting audit of records of this uh, reporting entity okay direct to conduct audit of records now during this audit in case reporting entity has not complied with the provisions of act okay after conducting the audit it has been proved that the reporting entity has not maintained the records or not followed any other requirement that has been prescribed in the prevention of money laundering act in that case the enforcement director can pass any of the following orders first one is issue warning okay he can warn the reporting entity saying that you don't repeat uh, this type of mistake again or he can direct to comply with the requirements he can tell the reporting entity he can inform the reporting entity about what are the defaults that the reporting entity has you know made and will ask the reporting entity to correct all these defaults that would be direct to comply with the requirements or ask for periodical reports he can direct the reporting entity to furnish some periodical uh, reports as may be prescribed or impose penalty on the reporting entity from 10000 rupees to 1 lakh rupees those would be the orders that uh, the directorate uh, can pass on the reporting entity now note reporting entity would not be liable for any criminal or civil proceedings for furnishing the information see basically this act prevention of money laundering act is asking the reporting entity to furnish some confidential data to the enforcement director if it furnishes the confidential data of its clients to the enforcement director then there is a possibility that clients might you know put a case or put a suit against the reporting entity thereby the act has given immunity from those types of suits to the reporting entity which says that reporting entity would not be liable for any criminal or civil proceedings that are initiated by the clients for furnishing the information to enforcement director hope that is clear next section number 16 power of survey see basically most of the people will be confusing between survey and search but they are not similar they are different survey is somewhat mild whereas search is a serious issue okay during survey officers who are conducting survey cannot seize or take the properties with them but the officers who are conducting search can seize and take the properties with them that would be the major difference between survey and search okay in case of survey they will only collect some you know information from the entities let us see but you remember that survey is not much serious whereas search is very serious okay now power of survey 
authority has reason to believe that offence of money laundering is conducted. Okay, it feels that offence of money laundering is being conducted. It has reason to believe that the uh, offence is being committed. In that case, it can conduct survey of such person at such premises. After conducting the survey, forward record of reasons for survey and such other records to the adjudicating authority. Okay, next section number 17 search and seizure now either based on the information that has been collected during survey or independent independent of information that has been collected during survey search can be initiated okay search can be initiated either directly or based on the information that has been collected during survey hope that is clear now during the search Officer not below the rank of deputy director has reason to believe that offence of money laundering is committed or possession of proceeds of crime. A particular person is possessing the proceeds of crime. Such a reason is having with the uh, officer not below the rank of deputy director or possession of property related to crime. A particular person is possessing property related to crime. In such case, such officer, such uh, officer who is not below the rank of deputy director can conduct search on the premises of such person. After conducting the search, he can seize the property or records found. After seizing, he has to forward the report of such search and seizure to adjudicating authority. Now, once the report has been forwarded, whether these officers are also having are, uh, power to arrest the person let us see either director that is enforcement director or deputy director or additional director has reason to believe that any person has committed offense offense of money laundering and they can arrest such a person and inform him the grounds on which he has been arrested okay they are having the power to arrest the person you know on whom they are having a reason to believe that they might have con you know committed the offense of money laundering after arresting them you give the reasons on which you know that person has been arrested now after arresting within 24 hours take him to special court or judicial magistrate or metropolitan magistrate okay now during the search or seizure you might have you know seized the property or you might have freezed the books of accounts now for how much period you can keep those books or properties with you time period for retention of property and records basically it is 180 days from the date of seizure okay from the date you have seized the documents or seized the property for a period of 180 days you can keep with them now adjudicating authority can order for extension of period if property is prime of ac involved in money laundering okay if adjudicating authority feels that prima facie this property might be involved in the uh, in the money laundering in that case he can extend the period of this 180 days or if he doesn't feel that this property is not involved in money laundering like this he feels in that case he can order for release of property not involved in money laundering okay once he orders for release of the property director or any officer authorized can withhold the release of release of the property that has been ordered by the adjudicating authority for a period of 90 days if they feel that property is relevant for appeal proceedings okay the adjudicating authority decided that the property is not involved in money laundering but the director or any other officer is not satisfied with the decision given by the adjudicating authority they wants to file an appeal against the order and for filing the appeal the officer or director feels that this property is this, this property must be kept with them only for filing the appeal in that case even though the adjudicating authority has ordered for release of the property the director or officer can hold the release for a period of 90 days if they feel that such property is useful for them for filing the appeal hope that is clear next appellate tribunal Appellate Tribunal under Smugglers and Foreign Exchange Manipulators Act 1976 shall be Appellate Tribunal for PMLA. Okay, for the purpose of Prevention of Money Laundering Act, the Appellate Tribunal that has been established under 
Smugglers and Foreign Exchange Manipulators Act 1976 would be the appeal tribunal for this act. Next, appeal. Appeal to this appeal tribunal can be filed by any person aggrieved by order of adjudicating authority or by reporting entity aggrieved by order of director. The director might have, you know, passed an order on the reporting entity of imposing some penalty or asking the reporting entity to comply with some directions. In that case, if the reporting entity is not satisfied with the order passed by the uh, director, in that case, it can file an appeal to the appellate tribunal. Now, within how many days the, uh, the appeal has to be preferred? Prefer an appeal to appellate tribunal within 45 days. Once the appeal has been filed, the appellate tribunal has to dispose the appeal within 6 months. Hope that is clear. Section 42, Appeal to High Court. Person aggrieved by the order of appellate tribunal can file an appeal to High Court within 60 days. Okay. Now, the concept of reciprocal arrangements. What does this reciprocal arrangement means? Basically, Indian government will enter into agreement with foreign countries. Why it will enter? Let us to deal with the offences that are involved, uh, that involve cross-border implication. Okay, first of all, we will understand what is meant by offence of cross-border implication. See, there would be two instances. First of all, scheduled offence is committed outside India. The offence that has been prescribed in the Schedule to PMLA Act has been committed outside India. It is not committed in India. But the proceeds that have been earned from committing such offence are transferred to India. That would be first case of offence of cross-border implication. And the second one, scheduled offence is committed in India. But the proceeds of crime are transferred or attempted to transfer out of India. Even this would be second case of cross-border implication. If you observe, for the offence that has been committed outside India, you have to consider it as cross-border implication only if proceeds have actually been transferred. Whereas, for offence that has been committed in India, you have to consider it as offence of cross-border implication if the proceeds have been actually transferred or attempted to transfer even if the person has attempted to transfer but he has actually not transferred even in that case you have to consider it as offense involving cross-border implication now for dealing with these types of offenses central government may enter into agreements with foreign countries why for enforcing provisions of this act and for exchange of information relating to properties that are involved in the money laundering now see how it would be useful the investigation officer in india is conducting investigation of particular offense of money laundering during the investigation he feels that the investigation officer feels that evidence relating to particular offense is available in contracting state see contracting state means the country here state means the country the country with which India is having an agreement will be known as contracting state. Now, the investing officer feels that the evidence relating to this offence which has been committed in India is available in such contracting state. In that case, the investigating officer will make an application to the special court saying that the evidence relating to this offence is you know, present in the uh, contracting state you please get that evidence like this he will make an application to spe special court once the special court accepts the application if special court also feels that yes the evidence relating to this offense might be present in the foreign country in that case what special court will do is it will give a letter of request to such authority in the contracting state okay there will be particular authority in the contracting state which will be dealing with uh, those types of offences. For such authority or the court, the special court in India will give a letter of request. Requesting what? Requesting to examine the facts of the case and take such steps. And if at all you, you are able to gather any evidence, you forward the evidence collected to the special court. Okay, Like this the letter of request would be sent. 
the uh, the court or authority in the foreign country gathers any evidence the same will be sent to the special court and the special court will forward to the investigation officer in the same way let's say the contracting state in the contracting state also they require some evidence let's say some offense of money laundering was performed in such contracting state and they feel that some evidence relating to such offense which has been committed in their country is present in india in that case they will also issue a letter of request to india in that case we have to send the evidences that we have gathered to such contracting state that is how this uh, you know agreements will work reciprocal agreements will work by this we, ha we have completed prevention of money laundering act we have not discussed some miscellaneous topics that you can you know read i have tried to cover almost all the concepts hope that is clear